Ready? <laughs> Are you ready with the mic? Huh? Okay, so <laughs> let me introduce Rajesh, who is going to give us talk on kernels, but not in the classical setting. And I have known Rajesh from 2010, so 10 years now. And he has been around the world, been to US to do his thing. First he was in India, finished his undergrads, then moved to US, did his PhD, then he went to Israel, did his postdoc at Wiseman, yes. then he moved to University of Warwick, where he's currently doing his postdoc, and he's also in a good job market, so if you have a good job, please give it to him. <laughs> so now, with this, let me invite Rajesh, uh, who has training in parameterized complexity, but he likes to use parameterized complexity in other domains. So he will give us a talk on his training comments. Uh, uh, thank you for the very very nice nice introduction, and thank thank you for the invitation. So uh, sorry to be here only for my talk, but as uh, uh, Saket mentioned, I'm on the job market, so that is one of the reasons why why I could not be here earlier. Okay, so I'm, so the title of my talk when Marchin asked me, like, can you speak about streaming kernels? So I said yes, but the actual title of my talk is something like streaming plus kernel slash FPT is what? Because, I mean, this is something that we kind of want to combine these two notions, and we have some ideas and some results, but I think the picture is still quite wide open. So my talk is going to be kind of more, of, more about trying to tell you about this model and some results and just say that, like hopefully try to convince you that this is something worth considering as well as your standard kernel models. Okay, so, so f just for completeness, let me kind of define what are kernels. So you have a graph with input size n, you have some parameter k, and from this you want to construct a small graph with of size some f of k, and the parameter is some g of k, and what you want is you only allow polynomial time, and you want this instance to be equivalent. So this is our very standard definition of kernel. Feel kind of silly saying it on the fifth day of, of this workshop, but here it is. And we are all quite happy in this room with this definition, right? Because what do we know? We know that a, a problem is FPT if and only if there is a kernel. And if, if, if you have a FPT algorithm, then that means there is some kernel. And then the next, next step is whether or not we can design polynomial size kernels, right? And if we can design polynomial size, how, how much can we reduce it? Or if not, we have some recent lower bound frameworks which say that some problem does not have a polynomial kernel under some assumption. And even for problems which have polynomial kernels, we can say that, okay, this problem has a k square size kernel, but does not have a k to the two minus epsilon size kernel and so on, okay? So we have a kind of nice picture of this standard setting and we're all happy, but let me just play devil's advocate for a minute and saying, say that supposing we were to really find somebody who does really applied stuff and tell him that this is the definition of uh, pre-processing that we have. Are you happy with it? And this person would maybe say that, yes, I mean, seems okay, but I'm not really sure I can really use it well. So one thing, for example, is that random access is, is not very easy, right? So they would ideally prefer sequential access to the input. Or for example, even storing the whole input, which we do here implicitly, is maybe sometimes too expensive. Whereas if we have some kind of streaming model, where, let me formally define it, so your, your set of vertices is fixed, and your edges are i one by one. Okay, so, so your vertex set is fixed, and you don't see this input all at once, but you see it as a stream of edges, and every time you see an edge, you have to make a decision whether or not you want to keep this edge in your input or not, okay? And this decision has to be fast. By fast, I'm being vague, but this decision has to be irrevocable, in the sense of once you decide that I'm not keeping this edge, you can't later remember that I forgot this edge earlier. Okay, so now, now you no longer have the input size n, you only have something which you store, 
and the objective function is somehow how much do you store. Okay? So in this setting, forget about kernels, but you have to essentially pay for all the edges that you store. Okay? And we don't want to store all the n square edges of the graph. Okay? So just think of your favorite graph algorithm. Does it work if you don't have access to the whole graph? Yes? Uh, when you say it's irreversible, when I hit an edge, can I <coughs> later decide to delete it? No, for now, no. Yeah. So, so, so once you keep it, you put it into your local memory, and you already pay a cost for it. So in this model, yeah. W once you decide to keep it, you will keep it. Once you decide to forget it, you forget it forever. Okay? So yeah, so, so c c going back to this kind of general streaming model, think of your favorite graph algorithm, whether it's a polynomial time algorithm or some FPT algorithm. Does it really work if you don't have access to the whole graph? That is something we kind of take it for granted when we want to design <laughs> any algorithm. Yeah, so I mean, with, with high probability, your algorithm will not work if you don't have access to the whole graph. And Fafine and Karach in 2014 kind of asked, formally asked this question, saying, if you have this streaming model, which kernels can you implement in this streaming model? Okay. So if we can implement some known kernels in the streaming model, then we, don't, then we only kind of see parts of the input, and we actually just create the kernel as we see the input. We don't even store the input. Right? So it seems kind of ideal, but it is a more restrictive model than what we have here. Okay? So what they were able to show was some, some positive results. So, so the first one, for example, was there is an order k square log n bits algorithm for k vertex cover. And lower bound of omega n bits for uh, many problems. Okay? So they were only able to have a very few kind of positive results. But they were able to show that for, for many problems, any streaming kernel would, would not be able to have something which is size f of k. This log n factor is just to uh, represent vertices of, uh, from, the set, si uh, from the set n. So, so they were able to show that somehow we, uh, these, uh, f for like several problems, you would essentially have omega n bit lower bound. Okay? Now, when I talk about this lower bound, I won't really somehow say right now how, how they get it, but this, this, this is not conditional. Unlike standard kernel lower bounds, this lower bound is not conditional. Okay? So w w what we have done is taken this standard model, converted it to a more restricted model of streaming, so that we can obtain some positive results. And then, because it is a more kind of stronger model, we can get many lower bound results. But then these are unconditional. OK? OK, so uh, this work was being done, done in Bonn, I think, at the time. And I was not aware of it, particularly. So my kind of introduction to this came from talking with somebody who, who was working in, working in streaming. So, so this person, Morteza Monemizade, was visiting us in Maryland when I was doing my PhD. And he actually came to work with, with some other people on streaming. And one day, we just, we just ended up talking. And he asked me, what do you work on? And I said, FPT algorithms. And he's like, what is that? So, so I just described to him our standard 2 to the k algorithm for vertex cover. And then I asked him, what do you work on? And he said, streaming. I was like, I don't know what that is. So he gave me some examples of, of streaming algorithms. And to me, having never seen streaming algorithms, they looked very much like kernels. <laughs> like that was the kind of closest thing I knew of somehow compressing data. So, so I told him that, OK, we have this k square kernel for vertex cover. For, for k vertex cover. And I asked him, OK, like, do you think we can implement it in, the, in your streaming model? Right? So what is this k square size kernel? Uh, you, you just delete vertices of degree more than k and, and, and reduce k by 1. Right? But 
you can see that somehow this won't work in, work in streaming. Because what you might see is lot of voltages of degree k minus 1, and you have to kind of remember the degrees of these voltages because they might potentially get degree k later on, right? So this kernel might not really work for, for streaming. Yes? Well, I just don't understand your streaming model. You, you said that you, edges come and you decide to accept them yes. permanently or reject them. If I'm interested in vertex cover, why don't I just reject them all? So No edges. So in, uh, no, so 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 in the end, you have to kind of you have, you have to correctly output whether or not your graph had a vertex cover of size k or not, right? So 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 you have to solve this problem. But now the question is, kind of how much storage do you need to actually solve this problem, right? So, so deciding whether I can see the edge or not, or what? Yeah, no. So, so 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 you're given some graph. So the graph has edges even even up to e m. So. Yes. So, so you have this whole input, and you only want to remember part of the input, but still, able, still you want to answer the, the same answer as if you were seeing this, seeing the whole input, right? So, so you have a graph given by these stream of edges, and this has some answer, yes or no, right? So, either this graph has a vertex cover of size k or not. But what I want to say, uh, so in the streaming model, I'm asking how much of this do you need to store to be still be able to answer correctly as before? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we have this kind of very simple kernel which I described to him, and we somehow seem to realize that okay, this doesn't really work in streaming. So uh, what can we do? And then he he told me that yeah, maybe K vertex cover isn't the kind of really really good problem to solve because we have a really strong lower bound. That is what he told me. But I said, no, no, this is the problem we care about and we want to solve it. Okay? So, so Marthasa told me the following, that, that min vertex cover has an omega n square lower bound for streaming. So this is without any parameterization. So just given a graph, how many bits do you need to store to be able to compute the <laughs> compute the minimum vertex cover exactly? Just the size, okay? And you can see you can see that this is tight because you can just store the entire adjacency matrix using order n square bits, okay? So what this is is basically you have to kind of store the whole graph, and this lower bound lower bound is is also unconditional. So, so for example, how, how would you try to show a lower bound for for any streaming algorithm? This is usually done via via communication complexity. So there is a problem of index. So you have two people, Alice and Bob. So Alice has a string x between from zero one to the n, and Bob has some index i. So you have two people, Alice and Bob. So let's say Alice has the string, and Bob has the index three. Okay. So, so Alice, Alice has, has the string, and Bob wants to know the know the third bit of the string. So Bob wants to know is this bit zero or one? Okay. How much communication do we need between Alice and Bob? for them to be able to answer this. Log, log n, because Bob can just tell Alice his index using log n bits, and then she just looks at that bit and tells it to him using one bit. So using log n plus one bits, you can, uh, they can solve this problem, right? But what if you only allow one-way communication? That Bob cannot speak to Alice, but only Alice can, can, can speak to Bob. So in this case, how much communication do we need? N, yeah. So, so you can see like a very simple pigeonhole type argument would show that you have to basically communicate omega n. So if you only have one-way communication, then then you need omega n bits of communication. And this also, also holds for randomized algorithms if you want prob probability of success to be strictly more than half. Okay, so, so somehow using this, how can I 
how can we show this omega in square lower bound? Okay. So, so it's so it's really easy. What we do is we consider two vertex sets. So x1, x2, xr, and y1, y2 up to yr, where r is is so r square is n. Okay, so I have r vertices here and r vertices here. I can think of think of this n bit vector as an incidence vector, and I have r square. I have potentially r square edges here in this bi-clique. So depending on whether or not this bit is zero or one, I will add an edge here or not. Okay. So 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 I will view this as an incidence vector and then add an add an add an edge here. So I have some edges going across. Okay. Now what does Bob have? Bob has some index i which is in n, but this index i corresponds to some vertex here and and some vertex here, right? So what does Alice do? Alice sees her string. She adds these edges going across, and sends the sends the graph to Bob. Now Bob looks at this and says, "Okay, I, I have this graph, and I know this vertex and this vertex here. So what he does is." For every vertex here, except his vertex, he adds two leaves. And for every vertex here, except his vertex, he adds two leaves. Okay. So now the claim is, is that this graph has a vertex cover of size 2r minus 2, if and only if this bit is one. Is this bit is zero? So basically, the the question now is whether or not this edge exists in the graph, right? <laughs> By adding two leaves on every vertex here except this vertex, I have forced this vertex to be to be part of the vertex cover. So I have to pick r minus one vertices here. I have to pick r minus one vertices here. So the only edge edge which is potentially not covered is this edge. And if, if this edge is present, then I need two r minus two plus one. Otherwise, two r minus two is actually enough. Okay, so we have a omega n lower bound, but omega n is basically r square, and this graph has r plus r, which is two r vertices. Right, so we have a omega n lower bound for k vertex cover. Okay, and you might think that okay, this is maybe because this problem is NP hard, but you can you can even show the same lower bound for checking if your graph has a triangle or not. It's a really simple polynomial time-solvable problem if you have the graph, but in streaming, just checking if your graph has a triangle or not has this. Okay. Okay. So we kind of have. Yeah. So so at this point, Murtaza told me this. This lower bound, and that was kind of bad news. Because <coughs> this simple kernel did not seem to work in work in streaming. And we seem to have some some strong lower bound, but then then we kind of observe that that this lower bound does not, for example, say that say that there is there is no so so this lower bound does not rule out rule out streaming algorithms for k vertex cover. Which use maybe say order k times n bits, or maybe order k square bits, right? Because because the, because this lower bound which I, which I just erased was when k was n roughly, right? So so this lower bound did not rule out algorithms with something like k times n times log n or k square times log n. Okay, so there was still maybe some hope of. Having some parameterized streaming algorithm, okay? Yes. So, so, so we are actually able to design a uh, parameterized streaming algorithm, which is actually also a kernel, which needs so many bits. Okay. So, what is what is this algorithm? So, this this k-square kernel kind of has the graph. 
and it works works in a very decremental way. Finds vertices of large degree and deletes them. Okay, but whereas in streaming we actually start with an empty graph, so we want something which is incremental, right? So what we do is the following: we we maintain a maximal matching. So I maintain a maximal matching. So I can do this just greedily in streaming. Okay. Okay. At the same time, what I do also is for every vertex that is matched that is matched in this maximal matching, I remember all neighbors up to k neighbors okay so what i'm doing is remembering all up to k neighbors for everything that is matched so so let's say that my stream first saw this edge then it later saw this edge when it saw this edge okay i was going to add it to the maximal matching now supposing i saw this edge okay i will add it now I see this edge, I will add it. So this edge, I will add it. I see this edge, okay, this, this goes into the maximal matching. Supposing I see this edge goes into the maximal matching. But now supposing I see many edges incident on this vertex, then at some point, if I have seen k neighbors for this vertex already, then I won't keep any more neighbors, okay? So let's say that I have stored P edges, P edges into the maximal matching, okay? What is a simple observation? How large can P be? P, yeah, so observation is that P can be at most K, because if, if P is more than K, I can just say no. I have to pick one vertex from, from every edge of the maximal match, right? So the first observation is that P is at most K, okay? So what is the storage that I have for this algorithm, which I have not yet proved is correct, but I just want to talk, talk about the storage first. So the storage is something like 2p times k plus 1, right? So this is something like order k squared, right? Yeah, so. Times for that. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so 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 this is storage in, in terms of words. And because of this bits, I get login. Okay. So I have this storage. Okay. Now why is this algorithm correct though? So so to actually show correctness, we need to argue that that vertex cover vertex cover of the original graph is at most k, if and only if vertex cover of this graph is at most k. of this G storage that we did is at most K. And this is kind of really easy to see. So why does this imply this? Because what we have stored uh, is a subgraph of the original graph. That's why this direction is easy. Now we want to show that why, why do we have the other direction, saying why is this smaller subgraph that we stored actually enough? Okay, so, so supposing we have a vertex cover, X, X is a vertex cover, for this smaller graph, G storage that we stored. Why is this uh, not a vertex cover for the, for the bigger graph G? Okay, that means there is some edge AB which was not covered by X. Okay. But, but what I had done was I had stored a maximal matching. That means either A or B was matched in my algorithm. Right? So let's say that this vertex was A. Now, x, x does not cover this edge AB, which means that this edge AB was not stored by my algorithm, right? So this was not stored by my algorithm, which meant that I had seen more than k neighbors for A, because I'm storing all up to k neighbors, right? But then this means that, that A, A has degree more than K in this graph GM that I stored, 
So that means that A has to be part of this vertex cover of size at most k. So this contradicts the fact that AB is not covered by X. Okay? So we have a very simple but kind of incremental kernel for K vertex cover. And okay, so so this algorithm, yeah, so so we have algorithm which is just k square log n bits. And what we can see is that this previous lower bound gives you a lower bound of omega k square as well. Okay. Because k was linear in linear in, in n earlier. Okay. So you have upper bound and you have a lower bound, and you somehow cannot seem to improve this to k square log n because <laughs> this lower bound is for k, which is order n, and order n square bits is actually enough. So you cannot hope to improve this to k square log n. Okay. okay. So we have this this simple simple algorithm, which is actually a streaming kernel. But now, what if I somehow don't want k square? So k square is too much for me. I just want something which is order k log n. But then this lower bound would somehow say that this is not possible, right? So what I'm going to do is going to allow you multiple passes over the input. Okay? And then can we do something? So, so for k vertex cover, when you only have one pass, we have order k square log n, uh, uh, k square log n bits algorithm and omega k square bits lower bound. But now, supposing I, supposing I want an algorithm which only stores k log n bits, then how many passes do I need? Right? Supposing I could have some, some number of passes which was some function of k, sometimes that might be enough. Yes. When you say order k log n bits, it is number of vertices or number of vertices plus k Number of vertices. Right? Yeah. Because even if I gave you a whole graph, you cannot do better than k squared. So now, now I, yeah. So now, as the question saying, okay, for for one pass, I have a kind of nice, un, almost tight understanding of what is the complexity. But, but, but even now, mm -hmm. we do not know in one pass whatever bound you gave, mm -hmm. is it a k square log n bound on the number of edges or the number of vertices that are involved with it? So it is both, right? Okay. It's both, because here, here you have. Yeah, but. Can we just prove that they cannot have a one-pass algorithm with order k vertices and order k square edges? No. No. So, so because this this lower bound is just kind of information theoretic, right? So, 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 so it so just says size. yes, yes. So it just says yeah. So you're right. So it just talks about total size. So we could have some very non-trivial algorithm, even over one pass, which takes order k square bits. But gives us order k vertices. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then you would ultimately have storage of k square log yes. k square log. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So now I only want to somehow store totally store k log n bits, either as vertices or edges, and I ask how many passes can we do we need to be to be able to reduce the storage here. Okay. So one 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 idea would be somehow to use iterative compression okay so what i do is so so in the first pass computer maximal matching so now now i have have a vertex cover of of size at most 2k okay and now i now i have k compression steps So and so 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 for each compression step, I spend something like two to the i. So I, I so I have two to the i choices where i is i goes from 
2k to k plus 1. So in this step, step I'm going to compress from size i to size i minus 1. So I have something like 2 to the i choices. And now this disjoint compression problem is very easy, right? Just add, so, so, so for every edge, you are forced to add something which you, which you have to add, right? So I can, I can implement it in streaming. Think of the FPT algorithm for what K vertex cover using iterative compression. This disjoint compression step is actually solvable in polynomial time, and it's actually very easy. For every edge, you, ha you have a forced choice, okay? So what you have here is something like two to the, so for, so for every compression step, you need something like two to the i passes. So what you're what you trying to tell us that, so you look at this vertex cover, and you fix a subset of this vertex yes. cover, yes. which you decided to either include or exclude. Exclude, yes. And for excluded object, you're trying to keep something. Keep something, the, exactly, in, in yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we exactly, emulate the FPT algorithm here, right? Okay, so, so here you have something like two to the i passes and you have k steps. So, so totally you have something like two to the two k times k passes, right? But what have you stored? You have only stored a vertex cover of size something like two k forever. And here there is something uh, uh, which you have to do where you have to be able to kind of enumerate all subsets of this current vertex cover that you have. So you just put a dictionary ordering on them and you can do that as well, okay? Okay, okay. so, so if, I, if I only want to restrict myself to k log n bits, then I need, uh, I have some algorithm which has something like two to the two k times k passes. But in this passes, you have solved it. Yes, yes, yeah, so. It's not a kernel anymore. Not a kernel, anymore. yeah. Yeah, so actually now I have kind of switch towards parameterized streaming algorithm already, yeah. So, so in this problem, we actually want to somehow only say whether or not there is a vertex cover of size k, but all the algorithms we seem to know are actually even giving you a vertex cover of size k, okay? So for this stronger problem where you also output a vertex cover of size k, this is optimal storage, right? Okay, so now, so we have this kind of slightly complicated algorithm uh, if you do not know iterative compression, which gives you k log n bits and something like two to the two k times k passes, okay? But there is an even simpler algorithm which gives you two to the k passes, which everybody in the room knows. Vertex cover branching. Branching, right? So, so we, uh, can we somehow do our standard two to the k time branching algorithm in streaming. Yeah. So, so somehow I want to do this, right? So, so what you do is the following. You will try all bit strings of length k, okay? So I have currently, let's say I have one zero zero one zero zero one zero and I have some vertex cover, and I will see, see my stream of edges. Okay, so supposing currently I am looking at this bit and I'm looking at this edge, okay? So supposing, so, so I will go on adding things to my vertex cover. Supposing at least one endpoint of this edge already belongs to my vertex cover, then I just move on to the next edge, okay? Suppo otherwise, I have not covered this edge. So, so this edge is some x and y. So now if this bit, if the current bit, bit that I'm looking at is zero, I pick the smaller of these two vertices. And if the bit is one, I pick the larger of these two vertices, right? By smaller and larger, you just fix some ordering on the vertices beforehand. Right? So this way, you can, you have a two to the k pass order k log in bits algorithm, okay? So now the question is somehow, can we show any lower bound? Yes, and there is some lower bound which follows from, from some known work where you can show something like you need k by log n passes if you want, if you only want to keep 
k log n bits. So, so, so there is a kind of big gap between uh, exponential upper bound and polynomial lower bound. Okay. Okay. So, so we so we kind of consider this one extension to one extension to, to multiple passes. Now, how about if you also allow edges to be deleted in your string? Right. So far, implicitly I was assuming that you can only add edges, but now what if you can also delete edges from your string? Right. And you can also delete edges multiple times. To reduce that two for at least, for example, one point five years. No. Even not that. No. What is that? I mean, is there any effort this to make it instead of two to the k, one point five to the k, for example? Like it's a like not not that low, but it's slightly low. Yeah. So. Okay. So what if you now somehow have deletions of <laughs> deletions as well, right? So so in streaming, this this model is called as dynamic graphs. You can delete and delete edges and add edges. Of course, you can only delete edges once you have have added them, right? But 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 for the same edge, you can add it, delete it, add it, delete it multiple times, right? All you know that your entire graph stream has polynomial length. That is all that is given to you. Okay. So when you have when you have edge deletions as well, more or less any kind of graph theoretical algorithms would fail, right? Because I would look at your algorithm and try to give you some adversarial edge ordering by making you by first adding some edges, which which make your algorithms do something and then delete those edges, right? So here we somehow some need some 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 actual streaming techniques because so far we really haven't used streaming anywhere. So when you have k vertex cover. But for dynamic graphs, then what we are able to show is that there is one pass algorithm, which is which uses k square polylog n bits, so we so we basically kind of haven't lost much compared to to this algorithm, okay. Of course, this was uh, deterministic. This one is not. Okay, and this lower bound holds here as well. Okay. So is the issue with dynamic is that suppose I try to keep some sketch. Okay, try to keep this sketch, and the problem is it might be might would have kept some other edge for the sketch, but. Now you are deleting it, and uh, hence we have lost information. Although the, say for example, vertex cover size will not decrease yes. if you have kept some other sketch. Yes. Yeah. So, so for example, what you could do is, is kind of just add all the edges. So vertex cover size size will go to n minus one, and just delete all the edges. Keep doing this multiple times because, you, because all you know is your graph stream is polynomial. But I could make this polynomial n to the hundred even, right? So. Right. So my question to you, like. Do we need to assume that during the whole streaming process, I need to maintain, like you need to promise me that there is a vertex cover size at most k? No. So we only assume it at the end. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. So so so, so there are two models. One is where you where, where you cannot go completely crazy, where you are promised at each edge insertion or deletion your vertex cover of size at most k. So that that is called sometimes called as the as the promised model. But in this setting, you only know you only want to check whether at the end of your stream do you have a vertex cover of size at most k or not. Okay. So, how does this algorithm work? So it's actually quite simple. So what I'm going to define is. Something which is heavy, heavy vertices. So, so these are vertices which have degree at least something like 10k, and then I have the remaining part of the graph which are shallow edges. Okay. 
So heavy vertices are those vertices which have degree at least 10k and shallow edges are edges <coughs> such that neither end point is actually heavy. Okay? So what do we know? We know that every heavy vertex has to be part of the part of any vertex or of size at most k. Right? Because it has degree more than 10k. So, so what we do is we actually sample the graph in a way such that we actually we actually store all the shallow edges. And for every vertex here, which has degree 10k, we can't remember 10k because then we would remember the whole graph, but we remember something like 5k of these edges. Right? So, so we remember a large fraction, half, half of the edges of each guy. Okay? So, so if, if we actually do this, we are, we are in good shape. Right? Because I know that every vertex here has to be part of the vertex cover anyways, and Every, all the edges here I'm storing, right? So, so here, instead of keeping all the neighbors for every heavy vertex, I can just keep something like 5k neighbors for every vertex. Yeah. Yeah? Why did deletion make here? Yes, so, 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 so I still haven't, haven't talked about deletion at all. I'm just talking about this in term, terms of a general graph theory concept, right? So. Uh, for the heavy vertices, I'm somehow just going to compress the graph first by saying they may have degree more than 10k, maybe some function of n, but for me it is kind of enough to just keep degree 5k, right? Because I'm keeping all the shallow edges as well. Okay. Now, how many heavy vertices can I have? Something like order k, because all of them have to be part of every vertex order of size k. How about shallow edges? They can be order k square, right? Because uh, each vertex here has degree at most 10k minus one. So, so if you want to have a vertex of size k, then you, you need to have this, right? So now, because you only have order k heavy vertices, and they may may have had large degree, even function of n, but I'm only going to keep 5k neighbors. So now my graph size that I store is order k square edges here plus order k times 5k, which is order k square here as well. Okay? So I actually, so yeah, so, so this compressed graph has size order k square and has the same vertex cover as the original graph, right? So, so now the question is somehow, how do you implement this in dynamic streams when you can delete edges? Right? Yeah, so for this, yeah, I think the uh, algorithm is kind of Technical, but what we do is is basically something something uh, as the following. So you consider something like 100 k color classes. So this is 100 k color classes. You color each vertex uniformly at random with these 100 k colors. So I have some vertices here, some vertices here. Maybe this color class has no vertices and so on, right? So I delete vertices, uh, delete edges within each color class. By delete, I mean like I won't store them, right? So I have something like 100k choose two pairs of color classes. For every pair of color classes, I will use a data structure, which is called as a L0 sampler. So, so this data structure has the following property. It uses only polylog and space. And in the end, it will output for you one edge uniformly at random that was inserted but not deleted. Okay, so it, so it will look at all the edges that were inserted in the algorithm but not deleted. So basically whatever remains at the end and it will output for you one, one, one of these edges uniformly at random. So this is a very well known data structure in, in, in streaming algorithms and you can implement it in, in log n space. So what we can show is basically if you, if you actually color the vertices using a hash function with, with 100k colors, and then you, you actually use this L0 sampler for every pair of color classes, then whatever you get is actually uh, good. So, 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 so basically, uh, in this sample subgraph, you would keep all shallow edges, and for every heavy vertex, you would keep 5k neighbors at least. Right? 
So, so you can, uh, so given this sampling, you can show that these two properties hold by by a simple argument. Yes. Are you coloring the vertices or the edges? Vertices. So, we, so we color the vertices for every pair of pair of color classes. We use a L zero sampler because there may be many edges. Just pick one of the edges. So, is the idea of the following is that you are keeping enough color classes uh, and you're basically trying to say that, okay, fine, if I have lots of color classes, then uh, my vertex cover has gone into different color classes. So from, so even if I shrunk this, the subgraph which I will get is like the kind of object Something that we're trying like to keep Yes, yes, cover. yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, because you only have, so because you have something like 100K colors and vertex cover has size at most K, yes. so only K of those are gone for the vertex cover, right? So you basically have a large, Number like huge constant in k colors left outside, right? And then you want to somehow essentially show kind, that kind of thing. But 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 because you have dynamic streams here, you need to use this L zero sampler for this. Okay. So this was kind of one extension. So vertex so so k vertex cover in dynamic streams, we can essentially do the same thing. And now one one other question is. What can you do for, for k vertex cover, say, in trees? So, supposing I want to output, so, 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 so trees only have linear edges, right? So I don't want to do something quite hard. And what you can show is that for streaming algorithms, even, even deciding between these two cases, Is, is, is actually hard. So here I have two paths on three vertices, and here I have one path on two vertices, and one path on four vertices, right? So, so, so this graph and this graph have the same number of edges, have the same degree sequence, so you cannot somehow easily distinguish between them in, them, them in streaming. And here you have a vertex cover of size, so here you have a vertex cover of one plus one, Near over vertex of one plus two, right? So you, you can kind of use this example to show that there is no sublinear space algorithm which does a which can approximate k vertex cover better than factor three half. Okay? And, and this lower bound also holds for trees. So was there, was there a question? Okay. Yeah, so, so this lower one also holds for tree, right? So you can ask somehow a, a more general question that look at sparse graph classes. Can we, can we, can we in, in sublinear in n space actually find some approximation for the k vertex cover or some other graph problem with some approximation? Okay, so we only have to look, look at estimation because uh, even in trees, the minimum vertex cover can be omega n. So if you want to look at sublinear algorithms, you have to look at estimation. Okay. okay. So let me kind of conclude with the uh, big picture. So, so we have defined some complexity classes. So the first one being FPS, semi-PS. So, so sub-PS. This is linear PS, and then everything else is brute PS. So what is what is FPS? So FPS is, is those problems which you can solve in f of k log n bits. Sub PS is those problems which you can solve in f of k 
some sublinear in n log n bits, linear ps f of k n log n bits, and finally brute ps is order n square bit. What does PS stand? Parameterized streaming. Yes. Is it all one pass here? Yes. So, uh, so I will just uh, come to that in a minute. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah. So we have kind of four classes, and of course, they have this containment as I've shown because of the very definition. And every problem belongs to brute PS, right? Okay. But as Fahad asked correctly, I have not stated anything about how many passes or so on, right? So, yeah, so, so any entry here has to look like a, a six tuple actually. So it is somehow problem slash parameter, approximation ratio, uh, deterministic or randomized. Uh, uh, number of passes, and finally, insertion or insertion deletion. Right? So you kind of have have this six tuple. So, so I can state this result as as vertex cover with the parameter solution size for one pass. Uh, deterministic algorithm in insertion only streams has k square log n bits algorithm. So, okay. yeah. so now, now somehow the question is yeah, uh, we want to place our favorite problems into this landscape. Okay. So one thing to mention is that unlike kernels and FPT algorithms, here we, we, sh we also need to consider pol polynomial time problems, right? Because uh, yeah, time and space are somehow different, right? So, so we have uh, we have k vertex cover here, but then we have k girth here. So, k girth is is there a uh, is there a cycle of length at most k? Yeah. So, so this is a kind of different problem. Yeah. At most k. At most k. Yes. So, so we can solve this in polynomial time. But so for example, mm -hmm. if uh, so, if I can test whether there is a cycle of size at most k or not, then I'm right. At least for your question. Yes. So yeah. So all these problems are, I mean, so so you can ask decision or so, solution versions. So why it is not in FPS, for example? Yes. So so what you can show is basically the the same kind of. Why can't I do color coding and check whether there is a cycle of length at most k? Okay, so we kind of do the same reduction as before. Okay, so we have uh, some R, R vertices here, R vertices here. Okay, what I, uh, so Alice sends her edges, which are somewhere across. Yeah, and then uh, Bob takes one, Bob adds one vertex here. He knows one vertex here and one vertex here as part of his input, and he adds an edge between this and this. Right? So now, if if there is a triangle, has to be between this, this, and this. So, so, so if your girth is at is at most three, then. So yeah, so 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 either you have a you have a cycle of length at most three, or it is at least five, because it is a uh, vibe yeah? I'm sorry, I don't understand, like, how, how do they modify the protocol to, to read the, like, like, Alice has the graph. Yeah, so, 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 so Alice has this string of length n. She adds these bipartite, uh, she adds some edges, which is a subgraph of this bipartite clique. Then she sends her graph to Bob. So Bob has kind of no clue of how this graph was constructed. He just has access to this graph, right? Now he has some index, right? Some index in, in this string n. So this index corresponds to one vertex here and one vertex here, right? 
So then, he, so he just takes this graph, he adds one extra vertex, and he adds edges to these two vertices that he knows are marked. Everything else looks the same for him, except this and this marked vertex. Right? Now when you do this on this, your whole graph. Right. Yes. Uh, no. No. But now, now in this problem. Uh, there is a triangle if and only if this edge is present or not. Right? So by actually solving this three girth problem, Bob knows whether his bit is zero or one. So solving this three girth problem solves index, which has a lower bound. That's why that's that's that is that is so 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 we have a, a lower bound of three girth. So three girth has omega n square lower bound. So, I don't understand how this lower bound falls from like, like adding his vertices. I mean, what's the protocol? Okay. okay, so the protocol is Alice constructs her, her graph and sends it to Bob, right? So what is the to total communication from Alice to Bob? Just her, her, her indices, right? right? So just this graph that she, she, she oh. built, right? Okay, so now using this communication, this communication, we, uh, Bob can now solve three girth. Okay, okay. So, so uh, we know that, but but we know that for for Bob to solve this problem, he's solving index. So there is a omega n lower bound on the communication, right? And the space the space storage of this algorithm is the same as the communication cost, because the only thing that Alice sends to Bob is this graph. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So, so I mean, what you're trying to say is that, is that uh, so we know that there is no communication protocol of small cost, and we now use it to say that there is no small space streaming algorithm. Okay. okay. Maybe maybe we'll talk offline. Okay. So we have this kind of four graph classes, and we have kind of tight problems for each class. So supposing I want to show that. Supposing I want to show that there is there is some problem which oops there is some problem which which belongs to to this class, how would I do that? So I can show that, for example, k path belongs to this class linear PS. So I would do that by giving uh, f of k n log n algorithm for all k. And uh, omega n log n lower bound for some constant k. So, and this f of k we can actually make it to be k times n, right? So, yeah, I mean, you can maybe think of this as a streaming kernel for for k path. Right? Of course, this has factor n and, and so on. But if you want, I mean, yeah, this may be a more general version. And because of this lower bound, you know that basically this is all you can do. Right? OK. And uh, I've defined these four classes. Maybe you can have some class which is super linear PS. Or you can have your own square root n PS or whatever. Is there a, a type for sub PS? Uh, yes. So I mean, uh, by tight, it uh, so. Like you said, some completeness. Yes. yes. So k path is complete for linear. Yes. Right? Yes. Is there some complete uh, uh, problem for so, so, so for example, we know that you can get two approximation for a vertex cover in trees using square root n space, but getting better than three half for k vertex cover on trees needs is omega. So it's not exactly the same problem, but. Almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there are also like you know, so there are also some results for this super linear PS, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, this is kind of the high level goal. And uh, yes. So like <laughs> this is what I mentioned that you can have this kind of super linear PS as well, which yeah. is either one plus epsilon. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I just did not uh, draw it here. Yeah. So you can have that. Yeah. You can have. 
into the three half PS and try to show some, some tight results. But for that you would usually need some multiple passes and so on, right? So yeah, so, so basically this is the, the landscape and pick your favorite problem and your favorite six tuple and try to place it. Yeah, that's it. So, so there are th there are some results. So, for example, you can think of think of uh, think of dominating set versus set cover, right? So, if you have general dominating set, then then you see the ed edges of the graph. But if you if you if you want to think of it it in terms of set cover, then for every vertex you see the entire neighborhood at once. So that is the vertex cover. So it's called as the vertex arrival model there. So when you see a vertex, you see all the edges incident on it so far. So there are some results which can do better than the than the <laughs> edge arrival model. Yeah, but uh, so I think that's mostly known for, I think for 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 yeah for dominating set and some other problems. There are also some other uh, st stream types that you can consider. One is ra random order. So here everything was adversarial. So you can consider that your uh, your graphs arrive in some uh, in some permuta permutation which is chosen uniformly at random from all permutations of the edges. That helps sometimes as well. Yeah. Any question? If not, if you, even if you have a question, let's take it offline. Let's find the speaker. Okay.